So now it's time to take down the plant and you're trying to figure out, okay, how do I do it? When do I do it? There's multiple ways of doing it. I like to use a little jeweler's loop or magnifying glass and I get right in there and I look at the, I look at the bud and I look at the trichomes. Now the trichome maturity is important to me. I may have a trichome that's just clear. I may want to have one that's milky and I might have one that's amber. That's just the progression of its age. When it's clear, it's too young to take down. When it's, cl it's cloudy, okay, we can start thinking about the takedown. Then you've got amber. Now some growers want their plant to be as much amber as possible, which makes it more of a sedative effect, more down into the couch or couch lock effect. So some growers want that because they like that type of feeling. Me personally, I like more of an uplifted, elevated, excited, type of a feeling. So I look at my trichomes very closely. I might be around 10% amber and mostly milky. And then I'm making a decision. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what's called topping. I'm going to take the big colas at the top first and I'm going to let it sit for another week, maybe up to two weeks even, but at least another week because all the lower buds are now getting that energy and they're getting more light exposure from the light because the canopy is shorter because I took the tops off. Then I let those buds really bulk out a little bit more and get more resin production. Now they call it greasing out. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna do a top, let it stay. Plus when you start to do trimming with your scissors and everything and you take down way too much, I've done it many times, you get excited about taking down your plant and you get in next thing you know, you got this big pile and you can, I like to trim wet, okay? I'm not, I, I've done dry trimming. There's pros and cons to it. And both, you know, there's growers out there, you'll do what's best for you. I know some like to dry trim and they like to keep, encapsulate the bud and dry it by hanging, things like that, or on, on try, uh, drying racks. I get that. I personally have found that wet trimming for me works great. I've done them both. Uh, I like the wet trim. I'm gonna capture all of the sugar leaf anyways and I'm gonna let that dry, but uh, so again, we're looking at getting more yield out of that plant. Then we have to dry it and cure it. So we're almost there, guys. We're almost there. When you dry it, so I've had growers say, well, what's the difference between drying and curing? Isn't it the same? No, it's not. It's different. When you dry, you can either dry by hanging it. I like to use to, depending on my environment, in some cases I've had strings going across the room where I just hang the plant on it, let it hang down in a dark cool place. So I like to be at 50% humidity and I like to bring the temperature down if I can. If I can bring it down to 60, 65, that's excellent. I want it to dry slower, but I have air moving in the room. I don't have it blowing right on it. I actually have it moving and then circulating in the room so that I don't get any type of bud mold or anything like that. So you need air movement, uh, but not directly on the cannabis because you're going to off gas all the smells and the terpenes. Uh, within the trichome heads. That's again, that's another thing you'll learn as you stay with this craft. Uh, but we want to dry anywhere on average, depending on the humidity levels within your environment, anywhere from seven to 10 days. And if it's very humid, you might have to go a little bit more, but you're going to definitely need to run a dehumidifier if you're in an environment that the humidity is staying up too high. You want to bring that humidity down. So in seven to 10 days, you're going to dry it. And then what I like to do is take a branch and just break it. If it just bends, it's not ready. If it cracks and snaps, I'm listening for that snap. And so I'll just go along. I use, a, it currently, I use a drying um, uh, a bin. It was basically a rack that's stacked. And I'll put it on there. I'll come back in about five, six days. And I just take the smallest ones first, the real thin ones, and see if they crack. And then I go to the bigger ones and I say, are they cracking yet? If they're just, again, if they're just bending, they're not ready. They have still a moisture in it. We want to dry first. So we wait till we can snap that branch. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cure it. Now curing, there's different techniques for curing. I personally use what's called sea vaults. These sea vaults are stainless steel cans where you have a, a different manufacturers. I use Bovitas, which is a two-way moisture pack, and you can get different percentages of the relative humidity. You get 58s, you get 62s. I personally like to work with the 62s because I like to dry a cure slower. I put it in there, I have a moisture pack, and that's a two-way. It'll put moisture in and take moisture out. The reason I do that, it saves me the hassle of what's called burping. If you're using the big mason jars, 
on a daily basis, you're gonna have to open it up and do a, a burp, as they say. You're letting some of that moisture come out. I like to gently just roll it, not a lot, because you don't want to tumble off and knock off any of the trichomes and just have, a, have them stick into the glass. So you gently roll it, don't overstuff it. So again, we're burping, and you're gonna do that for daily basis for, for several weeks. Uh, so you're trying to get it to cure. So what you're looking for is the bud, when you squeeze it, does it flatten out and stay flat? Or when you squeeze it, does it go down and then slowly sponge back up? That's what we're looking for. Then it's cured properly. Not still too much moisture, you squeeze it, it'll just stay flat. Just right, it'll go down and it'll just slowly rise back up. Now you're ready to enjoy your cannabis. Now that may take several weeks, two to three weeks, four weeks. If you can leave it for a month or two months, that's optimal uh, to let it cure. And when I say cure, what we're looking for in the sense of say, um, brewing beer or wine, there's, wine isn't ready till it's ready, right? It has to, has to ferment for a certain period of time. Cannabis has to lose its moisture in the glandular trichome heads. Uh, if you ever smoked uh, weed that's fresh, but it burns the back of your throat, the reason it's burning the back of your throat is the moisture that's still in the trichomes. It's burning off, and that's hot steam that's actually burning the back of your throat. So I like to think of it as like a grape. You know, you can eat a grape, it's delicious by itself, but then when you let it dry, it turns into a raisin, it's condensed, and it's very, very sweet. So think of the trichomes as getting all that moisture out and getting it to cure so the expressions come out, the flavors come out, the terpene profile comes out, in your nose you smell it, everything is really dialed in, and you have dank, beautiful fire in your hand, and everybody wants it. So. That's our segment today about growing and uh, growing in the city. Check us out on Instagram at City Grown. That's our handle out there. Check us out. Uh, I do a lot of posting of different things that's going on in my world and some of my little grows that I do at my own home. Just some fun stuff. Uh, if you're interested in really pursuing a career in the industry, check out our school at New England Grassroots Institute at grassroot420.com. Uh, we have all types of courses available. We're gonna be producing some business courses we, have, uh, we do consulting work. We have a lot of people coming to us and we're the oldest, longest standing uh, center here in New England. We've been here since 2012. So check us out online. If you're looking to pursue a career, you wanna get into a dispensary, you're looking for a job, there's all sorts of ancillary businesses. The way you know that, go to any of the cannabis events coming up and you'll see that there's just so many vendors out there and that's all cannabis related. So. Thanks for checking us out today and we look forward to seeing you soon for another episode of Growing in the City.